Hello Reloaders, we're back with another build series video and this one is for the alternate camera which I'm calling the Camera V2. Uh, it's a slightly different camera module than the one that we've started with and the reason for this is because I found out through the Discord and the community that the camera that, that I use is a little bit hard to find in some of the other countries or it's more expensive. In the US it's about $28 shipped to your door but in some of the other countries it's closer to 100 if they can even find it. So this camera module I found, and it I found this for about 18 bucks on the in the U.S. and um, on Ali and and uh, Alibaba I found it for 12, 15 bucks. So uh, I think it's a slightly more available in the other countries. And so we're going to cover the construction of this because there's a different camera housing and light ring that's needed. So let's jump into it. So the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that our camera housing fits into the classifier base. We want it to be a pretty snug fit. Um, we have a set screw just in case it's a little bit loose but here I had a hard time getting this one in so what I had to do is actually sand it and you can see I just sanded off the high points scraped a little bit of the uh, residual from the 3d printing now we need to plug in our camera and focus it we need to do this before we put everything together so just plug it in launch your camera app then we'll switch to the camera and after that we'll go ahead and put the camera inside of the camera housing once i have that in place i can take a piece of brass and hold it up approximately five to ten millimeters over the top of the housing and get an idea of where we're focusing so this is quite a bit out of focus as you can see so we'll need to take the camera out and then we'll rotate the uh, the lens but just so you can see the camera lens inside the housing aligns somewhere like this and it's a little easier to adjust like this and so I can turn the lens in this case clockwise to get it to focus a little closer so after a little bit of trial and error here you see that I'll get a pretty good picture that I'm happy with and then we can continue on with the build I'm gonna go ahead and clean the lens because I noticed it had some fingerprints on it we're not going to be able to do that once we install it. So we can set that aside for now and we're going to build the light ring. So the light ring uses this LED strip and it takes six sections. So I've taken a couple of wires from uh, our, my Arduino kit and a yellow and a black. I like to use yellow for five volt. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and clip off the ends of these wires because these wires I'm going to solder on to the LED strip. So my technique is just to throw the soldering iron onto the, the tab, heat it up a bit and put a blob of solder onto the LED strip. Then I can come back with my wires and just press them down and, and heat them up into the solder. You can see I put a little solder on the wire as well. So now we're going to put the LED strip onto the light ring. What I like to do is cut a narrow strip of electrical tape. I use white, but I don't really think it matters which color you use here. And this will allow us to take that strip and wrap it around the light ring to secure the LED strip in place. So our light ring has a flat side and a tapered side and the tapered side is going to go up. So we'll wrap our uh, LED strip around it. But before we do that, it's helpful to put your tape onto the LED strip. And I'll put about an inch, maybe a little bit more, inch and a half of overlap here. This makes it a little easier for us to wrap it around and tape it. So one thing you'll notice about this light ring is there's no notch in the bottom. So for this version, we just wrap them straight as they are here. So this version uses four screws to hold the camera in place. And those screws are approximately eight millimeters and they're M3 screws. And so what we're going to do is put two of the screws in first 
that will allow us to uh, align the camera to the notches there. So now we're going to put the light ring into the housing and we want to make sure we put the tapered side down so the flat side is going to face us. And also we want the yellow and black wires to be opposite of the notch, basically the same side the screws are on. Now we can slide our camera in and again the connector is going to be on the same side as our wires, opposite of the notch. So we need to slide the two slots in the camera underneath the existing screws. Once we get that centered and in place, we can go ahead and tighten the screws down. I'm going to give it a shake and see if anything's rattling around. Just I want to make sure that the camera is pressing that light ring in tight against the body. We don't want stuff loose in there. So I'll put the last screw in. And then we can go ahead and put the fan on top and close it up. So on this fan, you can see that I've already installed a couple DuPont connectors. And that just makes it easier to remove the camera in the future. The screws to hold the fan in place are M2 screws, and they're about 11 millimeters in length. So because the M2 holes are so small, I'll take a small bit here and just chamfer out the top. This will help the screws to be guided into those holes a little easier. You don't need to take off much material here just to clean up the top where the 3D print might have closed the holes up. So it probably goes without saying, but we're going to line these two slots together. So we need to also pull our wires over. So we'll leave a little bit of space there. Um, this will help us to uh, avoid pulling the wiring out as far as the USB connector. And once we get this lined up, we should be able to just put those screws in and finish up. This last part's completely optional, but I like to have DuPont connectors so I can quickly remove the camera if I need to do some maintenance there. So I've attached a four pin connector here. So I wanna cover a couple things as it pertains to this camera. It is a higher resolution camera. And so when we launch the software, and this is true for version 1.1.7 and up, you'll see in the 640 by 480 mode for this camera, uh, the brass is up in the corner. And this isn't an alignment issue. This is just that this camera doesn't truly support 640 by 480. It takes a block of the full resolution and uh, shows that in the corner. So you could try to align the camera to get it centered, but um, it's a better to choose a different resolution. So you can see as we go to 1024 by 768, uh, it is indeed centered. And 1280 by 720 I found for this camera gives me the best image. So it's a clear image. It's, it's somewhat centered, good enough for cropping. So this is the resolution I recommend for this camera from all my testing. Now I'm sure some of you would have the question, well, why don't we go with the highest resolution? I mean, we have 2048 by 1536. And yes, that picture would be amazing. However, we have to scan all those pixels and we have to crop out the pixels we need. And so when you add that many more pixels, the time to process the image goes up significantly. And so, Ideally, we want the smallest image possible. And in fact, at the end of the day, these images are being cropped out to 220 by 220. So all the extra pixels don't actually help us. And so I really want to choose a resolution that gives me a good picture, but is also the minimum in size. And that's why I arrived at 1280 by 720. The next thing we'll want to do is go into fine tuning. And so from here, we can say capture image, and you'll see the image is nicely cropped. It got picked up, but a couple things that I have to do here. So there's a new setting called BG Cliff. This particular camera doesn't actually give a true black background. Where black is the number zero, this is about an eight to 10. Um, so it's not truly black. And so what I did is wrote a little bit into the software to say if the color falls below 
20, we'll just drop it to zero. And this lets us detect better the, the brass. Now, this is just a scaling issue in that this little preview window was designed for 640 by 480. And so um, it's not stretching properly. Uh, in precision, I found one, two, three, four works fine. Uh, sensitivity somewhere between five and 10 and crop padding is 10. But for this camera, this has worked really well in my environment. So that's my recommendation. And you can tweak with these settings a little bit to figure out what works best for you. So the last thing I wanted to cover about this camera is the lighting. Now this new camera, although it's higher resolution, it has a smaller image sensor, it seems, and it doesn't pick up the light as well. And so the first thing I saw was all of my images were pretty dark. I had to go back in and remove the resistor on the dimmer and that gave me the light I needed, but it was a little bit too much. So after a lot of testing, I found somewhere around the 500 ohm range gives me the best dynamic adjustment range on the PWM dimmer. So where the other camera takes about a one to one and a half uh, K ohm, this is about half of that. So I would go with a somewhere around 500 ohm will give you the best lighting. Um, again, I'm not sure if that's the camera, although it seems to be the camera, or it might just be the new light ring design or the new uh, camera housing design. But anyway, take note that you're going to need a, a smaller resistor for this particular camera. Well, that's all I have for today, and I uh, hope you're enjoying the build. Have a good one, guys.